evening. I'm John Dowson, and this is Community Report. And tonight, we're uh, having our guest, Ralph Magel, Mr. Young Street. And Ralph is a local historian. He's a member of the uh, Newmarket Historical Society, an archivist. He's been doing a lot of work around town in pres and uh, preserving the on disk the old historical buildings. Uh, Ralph is also instrumental and very active in getting the 200th anniversary of Young Street uh, uh, going in Newmarket for the 200th anniversary. This was in 1996. So at, at that, I'll take off my hat, which I borrowed from Ralph, and uh, welcome you to the show, uh, Ralph. Uh, it's, we, you've been on bef yeah. before, I know. I, I, you're in your Mr. You, uh, Mr. Young Street uh, costume. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been on before. We've talked to many, many times. But this time, it's yeah. really something interesting, is uh, a book that's been recently published uh, called uh, 200 Years Young. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I, if, if I recall, a, um, an exhibit of photographs and things of uh, the villages and places between Young Street and Toronto and uh, Holland Landing, which was the original uh, 18 or 1796 uh, Young Street. Right. So in could fact, you it goes a little bit further than that. Goes, it goes to Innisfil as well. Could but you tell I, us okay, a, little bit of, a little bit about, about the book and, sure. uh, and so on? But behind us now, though, Ralph, we have a, a, a map, which was, uh, if the camera can get on that, which was a um, uh, Upper Canada Roads in 1796. And this dotted line here, if I recall, is that actual, is that Young Street there? The original the one that was blazed and so on through uh, Vicenco? Yeah. Uh, you see, th this, done, this is purported to be a map done by Lady Simcoe, and she drew it, and it, it actually, the original does have some color on, red color on it, but uh, she originally de described uh, Dundas Street, which, which was, ran all the way along here, as you can see, oh, I see yeah. and, and through into London, because uh, there's a lot of history involved. Uh, one time, uh, uh, the capital of Ontario, you know, was Niagara on the Lake, and then it was. Then they planned to to have it, uh, have the capital in uh, in London, because uh, to keep it far away from the the Americans, uh, so they couldn't attack it and all those kinds of things. So they built those roads along there, but uh, in in uh, around 1796. They were a little concerned about the fact that the Americans were, were uh, threatening the, uh, the uh, country in, in some ways and threatening their, their trade routes to where they were getting the furs. So they had to go all the way around here. here. Everything was done by boat in those days because there really wasn't much of a highway. This would be a trail. And so the, all, this, all of the furs and everything else went up and through the Detroit River and up in, in here. They were trying to shortcut all this. There, there's a way, uh, there's an old trade route up through the Ottawa River, but what they try to do is to shortcut between York, which is just, just beginning in 1796, and Matchadash Bay up here on, on Lake Huron. So they did this, uh, and what happened was um, they, they'd, uh, they'd heard about this, this Humber Trail, so they followed the Humber Trail up through the, the Humber, and they, they hooked into the into the Holland River and into into Lake Simcoe, and then they went up through there and to Machida, or they were planning to go to Machidash Bay, and then Which they is wanted, a, then they decided if that if that if this this was the old trail here, when they met an Indian up in in uh, in Hull Landing, uh, and uh, the Indian said, well, why are you going that way? That's the long way around. There's a there's a straight route to York. You go straight, straight south, and you can follow it through along the rivers. Ask the locals; they know, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and he said, well, "We've used that for hundreds of years, thousands, uh, probably." Yeah. Well, at least hundreds of years before that. So uh, they went up, and when they came back, instead of going down along the Humber, they came back directly, uh, straight down this this trail uh, that that the Indians had used to to York. Now they got lost on it, and lots of things happened. But when he got back to, to York, he, uh, he got a, um, uh, the surveyor, Augustus Jones, to survey a straight line up, up this, uh, this trail that they had followed to Holland Landing and therefore into, into Lake Simcoe. Now, would this have been uh, Simcoe himself who went up there first? Yes. At, uh, Simcoe looking and a bunch, for... of, a bunch of surveyors 
they all they went up and, and Elizabeth Simcoe went along with them and their dog and they part of it they did by by uh, traveling with horses and part with most of it by canoe and all up through there. So this is a, this is mm -hmm. the first of the uh, summer cottagers going north. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> in a way you could, you could call it that sort of thing. <laughs> and, and so it's into cottage country more. Right. Like, uh, and, but on the way down, they, they just follow this. They, they follow this more direct route. But there was no blazed trail or anything no, at that time. There was nothing there. It was a trail. It actually ran down through Newmarket, uh, down down along Main Street in Newmarket and, and uh, followed the river along and went went down south and picked up uh, each of the rivers and went over the over the uh, moraine and, and into into the, the rivers that uh, like uh, the, all all the Holland rivers all are on the watershed going into into Lake Simcoe so they all go downhill into Lake Simcoe as soon as you get to south of Aurora then the watershed goes the other way to Toronto uh, to to Lake Ontario and therefore they follow the water uh, courses along that way, and that 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 went went along this way. But, uh, I mean, you may not know, but is there anything written down about why they would take Mrs. Simcoe and the dogs and everything through this uh, wilderness? Uh, well, he took he took her along with him uh, all kinds of different places. Oh, this was an exploring expedition, yeah, really, right? Yeah, yeah, and and but they they still they still would go go together. I mean. Uh, they were family, so you know. And he, and on his way up, he, he he named all the different lakes and everything else, and the, with his family names, he uh, you know he was and and uh, named and Lake Simcoe as named well. Named Lake Simcoe, yeah, and uh, he, he named the islands up there uh, for his dog and his cat. And, uh, oh, yeah, and tiny else. township. And, yeah, yeah, yeah and right. all these these different things. So he 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 he, he kind of threw a seed everywhere. <laughs> That's you know, the way he he dealt with. But what it. was the, the the objective was. Uh, to uh, to bring uh, goods overland than it would be yeah, right and yeah. overland to Sim Lake well, Simcoe. Over, you got to remember we we see everything as land, but they see ever, saw everything as water. They they carried their canoes everywhere, and they would they, all, all this was is a long portage uh, here. They would portage from one one river system to another. That's what they did. So there would the be Humber. the Don River yeah. and, and the, the Hall. carrying place yes. was yes. just a portage into Lake Simcoe. So they were just trying to get to the to the to the water courses. It's a lot easier. Just just remember your old physics. It's a lot easier to paddle a canoe over water than to carry it over over trails. So they were just looking for portages. Anyway, that's the back. And Newmarket was on the uh, was on that uh, route. Right. I guess I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. And and uh, you know uh, Timothy Rogers came up that same trail and and uh, slept slept on on Main Street and that's the whole story. That when 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 we talk about the millennium, because that's the next thing I'm working on, then I'll tell you that that whole story about Timothy Rogers and and how he started Newmarket, because uh, in in uh, the two year 2000 and 2001, that's when Newmarket can go back to its 200th anniversary. Oh, that's right. So, so and this is this is just a, a few years, really, uh, yeah. 1796. That's before right. Newmarket was. Yeah. Uh, See, they just blazed the trail. All, all we're talking about it. Uh, Young Street was just a trail. It was just a series of blazes on um, trees, and that's all. There wasn't any. There wasn't any trail. It was. They they cut out a, a few trees in order to get through, but it really wasn't much of a trail. And this was all because of these uh, yeah. e these evil Americans who were going to be. Uh, well, that's, that was <laughs> part of the reason. Anyway, to go to the book, which is what what we really talked about, the 200 years young. Uh, the, this this book. Is uh, is a culmination of of that those celebrations in 1996. Uh, in as I say, all kinds of things were happening in 1996, and one of the things that was happening, uh, or one of the things that we did in order to do this history, the year before, a lady uh, who's on the the first of these uh, of, of these the boards that I have over here, uh, up in the top left hand corner of that board, she from CHP, which is a, a heritage group in Toronto, uh, asked all of us that, that were on the Young Street Committee, and, and we had organized the Young Street Committee uh, two or three years before 1996, and she, she asked us all to, uh, whatever, whatever heritage organization we were in, and there was a whole flock of, of heritage organizations in Toronto and all the way up Young Street, to, to do something that had to do with their heritage organization and Young Street. So uh, she asked me to do a bunch of boards. Uh, a bunch These of boards, were display boards display for... Display boards about Newmarket. 
So I, she said, do four boards that show the history of Newmarket. But do you mind if I ask you, yep. why did you get in, I mean, how, why would you ask you? You had been involved in some well, of this because, kind of thing Because uh, two years before 1996, I started the Young Street Committee, which was trying to, to design things that were going to happen in 1996. Ah, and so I we see. were meeting. We, we met uh, four or five times a year to try, of all the towns along Young Street and all the historical associations, to talk over getting getting things going for 1996. And this is Jane Beecroft? Jane Beecroft, yeah. Okay, and, so and there's a street named for after her down in uh, Willowdale, you know, Beecroft Crescent. Oh, it could yeah. be, but yeah. it's not necessarily of her because <laughs> she's not from that particular part. But one of the boards that I did is the, is the one, the far end, which is about Newmarket. She asked me to do four, and I did four boards. Uh, actually, one of them was this one, and, uh, and another one was, was uh, on the cover of this book, which is which is the original survey map of Young Street. Now this one here is the people. So this one is about, about Young Street and... Uh, people, farms, and transportation. This is the board we're talking about. That's right. That was, that was the first one you did? Well, that was one of the four that I did. And where was this supposed to be, where, where was that going to be displayed? Well, the, those, those uh, were going to go, uh, first of all, to uh, College, the old College Street Eats, Eaton's. But it's it's a college now College Park it was a display of 68 boards that were at College Park. And each different town had people. Each different town did it. I I went after all of the towns uh, in York Region and North to to get the, the boards done right to Innisville, and I asked each one, and they gave me their materials. We took it all, put it all together. They put these boards together, uh, did the covering on them and everything else, and then they set them up at at the College Park. <clears throat> now, did you take the photographs, the color photographs? Some of the color photographs are, uh, are ones that I've taken. The uh, the older ones are the ones that I I uh, took from our archives. Well, let's take a look at the top one there. That one. Now, as a building next to that, is that what? It, that is the that's the Quaker Meter House. Meter House. Yeah. And that's what it would look like. Uh, perhaps and that's the way it looked. Hundred uh, years ago. Well, yeah, it it hasn't changed that. That drawing, ago. sort of. Yeah, it's a drawing. But but the building looks almost the same. That's right. And this is the one up on Young Street, this is on Young across from the uh, Quaker Hill uh, uh, so next Plaza. Next. Yeah, that's right. Uh, almost across from near the courthouse on the west side of up Young. On the west side of Young. And uh, the, the the next one down is the another. The next one down is Young Street. Uh, I'm sorry, is in, is actually Main Street, uh, and uh, the, one of the earliest Rotogravure pictures of Main Street in Newmarket. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and so that's not a, a drawing, that's like a, no, it's a, a, a lithograph. A lithograph, a, yeah. A, a and it comes from an early, very early And then book. there's the Bon Ahom, or what is that building called there, the white one with the sort of pillars at the front. Okay, now that's, that's, bon, that's uh, bon, Bonshaw, Bonshaw that's which uh, has, been, has now been moved back. In fact, the, those, three, those three buildings that are on the left-hand side, they've been moved back uh, where the Canadian Tire is, where the new, uh, well, uh, there's a new building. Well, this is the, the Dawson Manor. The Dawson Manor. The Bonshaw Bond building. Shaw. And yeah. there's another one in there. Uh, and that's the, the, the George Dawson building. And they're now next to the uh, north right, of right the... Just, just behind Canadian Tire. But you can see them from Young Street. You can still see and, them. And what's the objective there? Is that to have those? Well, they're, they're, going, they're, they're, they're going to be used as offices uh, for doctors and that sort of thing in that subdivision that's going to go in there. Oh, so those buildings won't be open for display as historic homes, or no? no? Well, I, I, they're 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 owned by by them, and they're they're refurbishing them, and they're going to use them for part of that part of that whole. Do, so you did this one here, and then you did three others, a similar to this panel. I did a couple of other panels. Yeah, down at the bottom are all the original settlers on Young Street. A list of of all the settlers along our particular part from from the uh, St. John side road uh, at the south to. Uh, to uh, Green Lane at the north. So this was the era, uh, area that you were particularly That's looking right. at for for the the, um, the So we, the we did those boards and we, we gave them to her. She took them and we, we all put our displays up at College Park for a weekend. And then they traveled from there to the malls all over Toronto. Actually, they and they were also at the regional building for for uh, a, a month 
and you can see the boards when they were displayed at the regional building there, uh, up on uh, just below where her picture is. I remember we were taping uh, there at the, yep. uh, some shows before. So those those boards went all through to all the malls, and then eventually they said, "Hey, what are we going to do with them after the year?" So I said, "Well, why, uh, why don't you bring them up someplace where it's on Young to the regional building?" And so uh, John Scott uh, from the region said, yeah, that's, that's fine, so we put them up permanently at the region. And they're still there, although they're not displayed right at the moment, but they've been there uh, ever since. Permanently at the, uh, at the region. At the regional center. Right. Whereabouts as you go in? Uh, well, they, we had them all along the halls in there, but we take them all down to do the book, and we haven't put them back up again. Uh, we, would, we would like to divide them up and, and uh, send them out to, to various areas to show to show, like for the various towns, they use them as part of the show to promote the book. But in any case, they are not up there at the moment. They're in the back room, and they're going to go back up again. So was this book uh, actually uh, decided on before you did the boards, or did it come out? Oh, of, no. Oh. They, they talked about this long t a long time ago. But what happened when, when, those, when those boards were displayed, <coughs> excuse me, they were, when they were displayed at the, uh, at the region, we had a, a book where you could sign things in, and somebody came along. Well, lots of people signed the signed the book. Lots of times they were criticizing the regional building and all that sort of stuff. But uh, at the same time, they liked the pictures. So somebody wrote in, "Gee, this is this should be this should be maintained in some other way than than uh, this should be put into a book." And uh, the regional chairman, Eldred King, said, uh, "Yeah, let's let's do that." And so he he authorized them to. To, uh, to put up some money to to uh, make the book, and they called on me and they said, Ralph, can you come over and and help us out? Uh, John Scott, uh, I said, we're meet, I'm meeting with the publishers. John Scott is John the John Scott is the information officer for the region. Uh, you see, the re the region took over Young Street this year, so in a sense, they they had a, a vested interest in. So it's in a regional Street. road now, so not a, not a, a provincial highway as it has been. So uh, John Scott said to me, uh, come on over and we're going to talk to the publishers, and we talked to them. And as a result, to save money, which we're all trying to save for the government because, you know, everybody's so concerned about <laughs> how much government money is involved. Uh, and uh, Paul Millard, whose great-great-grandfather was uh, on the first farm uh, that, uh, that based on, on Newmarket, Paul Millard and I, uh, being into computers in a big way, we, we sat down and we said, we will scan the photos. So we spent four or five days. Paul did most of the work, and I, I did most of the manipulation. But uh, we scanned all the photos, and we we put together a book. And this is the book. These are all the boards. And if you look over here, you can you see where we this. where we uh, scanned the the photos. And we just num numbered the photos uh, on on the scan. And uh, then I went to the OGS, which had done all of the print part, and I I said. Surely you've got that on the computer somewhere of all that print. So, yeah, we... All the copy. All the copy. So a guy sent me up uh, the, the disc. Jane got it, and I, I brought the disc. We did all those pictures. We got the copy. It had a virus. I would get rid of the virus and all that kind of stuff, all this modern stuff that takes place with, with computers. And then we took that, and we gave it to the publishers, and they set up a designer, and the designer designed the book based on the pictures that, that we took out of there in the print. Now, I supervised all that, like tried to, if to you tell him what, what uh, he, would, he would do and, and which pages. I, I couldn't do all the boards. So there was no way I could do all 68 boards. So we did, we did as many of them as we, as we could on 143 pages. And we... I, I sort of selected anything that was really right involved in Young Street. And so I did a whole series of them uh, about the early history, the French history, uh, the, uh, the, the, the roads, and well, it, it just goes through. And you, the first loyalists, uh, the early settlers, uh, the, the, all, all of the first settlers along the road uh, were shown in here. As I said, the, the loyalists and uh, their locations. And the buildings at, at Black Creek, these are Young Street buildings that they have moved. And uh, uh, of course, the maps. I, lo I love this map here. This is a map of the, <coughs> of the original survey. And this is the map that's up here. 
this, I wanted this map to be the inside cover of the, of the book. Like I wanted it to go across here. And I thought that was great, except I'm going to charge us an arm and a leg to, to put that in so, so we, we, we couldn't get it because, again, we're trying to save money for the government. Keep saying that. It's a because, good idea, saving because, money. Because, yeah, people have complained, <laughs> oh, well, you're using government money for this. But this, as I say, we tried to do everything that, that could keep the costs down. Government, government money is our money. That's right. And everybody's <laughs> right. complaining about it. So we talked about transportation and then <clears throat> and all the different ways of, of transportation. On Young Street. Yeah, trucking, of course, got involved because the trucking was... And the roads and tolls. For part of the road, they, at the time, they had to do the the uh, toll on the road to make, to build it. Then we started in to the, all of the towns along Young Street, starting with Yorkville in Toronto, which uh, is it was a town. Deer Park, nobody's ever heard of it, but that was a town. Eglinton was one. Yeah. yeah. City of York, nobody realized the city of York was, was actually on Young Street, uh, but it was. We did all, all of that. We did North Toronto. We're then just moving we, a little slower there so we can... Okay. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Just thinking in terms of, of okay. getting through all those things. We did a section on North York. North York, that's my old home Okay, area, right? yeah, that's where I came from, too. Uh, and I recognize some of these buildings in, yeah. in North York. Well, that's right. We yeah. went, you and I went to the same high school. Earl Hague, yeah. Yeah. And then Richmond Hill. That was getting way north. And that was, yeah, north. That, that that was, was way that north. Was, uh, up in the, you see, everybody in Toronto says, the boonies up there somewhere. Where's that north of... North of Steeles. Well, do you mind if I just stop here for a minute? I noticed it. Is now it this one here? Aurora. You, yeah. uh, or here is it? You've taken pictures of what it is today on Young Street, uh, and uh, have a picture of the what the building was like. Yeah. Uh, or, or an archival photograph, and I, uh, that's quite interesting. Yeah. To all see. The, all that. So Aurora. some of these buildings are still there. Oh yeah, and these knock one down. The the. the the uh, dairy in, in, uh, in Aurora, they just knocked it down just a while ago. Oh, that's the... Uh, the, the Cousins uh, Dairy, the, yeah. the, the Cousins or the Scanlon, uh, Scanlon. Bakery, I think bakery. it was, yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's, there's uh, as I said, and then there's a section on Newmarket, and then there's a section on Hall Landing, and there's a section on, on uh, Bradford, and then Innisfil. And then, to fill the book in, I did a section on... Uh, I, I got a, a set of photos taken in 1922 by a, by a photographer called Galbraith, and he did he did photographs of all the major intersections and the main houses along Young Street. So I did a chapter with uh, the pictures that he took in 1922, and I took the pictures in 1996. Oh, that's of the one I'm talking. Exactly this, the same same thing. So we did. I uh, did a whole chapter on that. Now I got 40 boards, so I couldn't put them all in. So I just did sampling ones, you know, of, of main intersections. And then I did a chapter. I'd taken. I've got three books of pictures about things that were happening on Young Street in 1996. So I, I put a bunch of those pictures in there of all of that. And as I say, then we published the book, and it's available in local bookstores. Uh, in Newmarket and in Aurora, uh, in Bradford uh, and uh, in in Stouffville, nowhere else. You can't get it in the big big bookstores. You can only get it in the small independent uh, bookstores uh, in in a Newmarket and Aurora. And this was published by the region, was it? Published by the region. Yeah. But but you were instrumental, almost being the the author of this. Well, yeah, but you can't. I can't call myself an author other than. I did the pictures and for the... Well, here's an write interesting one. I did this, a lot of the write-ups for it. Uh, to tell us about this. This is on Drury Avenue. Okay, yeah. Well, right? this... See, what... In some cases, what, what Galbraith did is he says... He'd say something like, this is so-and-so's Charlton's house on Young Street. Well, I mean, I don't know where Charlton's house is. I Actually, I was... I had a lot of help from a, an old fellow for that... Uh, that happened to see my pictures uh, months before, and he said, "I know where those places are." So he and I went along, and he was showing me this is where this is where Galbraith's house, because he took a picture of his own house. This is where Galbraith's house is now. It's a it's a 40-story apartment building, you know. So he he told, but this one here I found myself, and I'm really proud of it. I'm driving along, looking at dr driving. You ever tried to drive Young Street and watch what the buildings are like? Well, I'm driving along, and I say. 
That's the building. That's Charlton's corner of Drury and Young, just close to where you and I went to high school. Which is a, a coffee it's shop. It's a coffee shop now. But here, there's the, you well, can you still can see the outline see, of the building. You can just see the two of them. It's very yeah. similar. And so you've got the modern right. 1996 picture, and this is based on 1922, right. which actually would have been, um, well, it would have been 100 years old maybe then, yeah, at that time. Well, I don't or, know, or, or, or I don't know what the it. history of that, of that building and, is. And you've got another one here, too, which is, I think this is Finch and... Finch and Young. The Finch, Finch and Young one. That's this one, is in 1922. That's, one, that's 22, that's now. And that's the one we featured on the cover. And, and, and you have the same thing with Holland. And I noticed there's Willowdale too. You know, that's yeah. that's my old yeah. hometown, yeah. Right. which is not much left. But uh, there's uh, the but Gibson House is there. I had lots of help from people who who said, "Yeah, I remember where that is." So I, I get guys from the Probus Club came to me. I've been a Probus Club, and they said, "They said uh, one fellow said, i 'I'll show you where,' because I I was missing about four that I couldn't find because I didn't know what the the Humberstone House." was right across the street from that one there, but it was it was completely gone. He now, if that's where it was. How much is this uh, book, if you look at it? The book is about $29.95. Plus tax, I guess. Plus tax. Right. Always have tax in there. And it's available there. at uh, the small, wh wh whereabouts uh, in Newmarket well, could I get Great this? Well, Great Books in Newmarket and uh, at R&R &R Books in Aurora and uh, um, Bonaparte's uh, Retreat. Treat. Uh, Bonaparte's Treat, I think she calls it. In, this, in New Market. And there's that's on the Main Street here. Right on the Main Street. So, and uh, uh, it's re available through the, the Historical Society at the museum and through Terry Carter at uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce and uh, in, in, um, in Bradford from the Bradford Historical Society, Aurora and the Aurora Historical Society uh, in the museum, all but, of those places. But this is really interesting for people who I mean, yeah, uh, you know, in Newmarket, you know what but I like about it is, uh, myself, is when I looked at the boards, you look at them, you see the pictures, and you haven't got time to read the print. You sit down and you read this book. I learn more about the history because I read the print. Because you never, you really sort of, when you see boards, you just see... Well, on that, uh, on that note, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll come back and uh, we're going to be listening to uh, Bert Coughlin who's going to yeah. be talking about his, uh, one of his latest songs he just That's wrote right. about Princess Well, Diana. I kept trying to get Bert, Bert to, to do Young Street songs. Don't go away, we're right back. In the future, you will access every form of entertainment whenever you wish, and do so with ease and simplicity. They tell us the future will be wonderful. But who, we ask, will make it practical? Right now, a group of companies you know is working together to build a more practical future. This sign is how you'll know them. Hi, I'm Robert Lusted, host of Your Health, Your Hospital. Join me every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on Rogers Community TV and find out what issues are affecting you and the community at York County Hospital. Watch East Gwillimbury today with Judy Lockson, right here on Rogers Community Television. Know what's going on politically and socially within East Gwillimbury, keeping you in touch with the community. The Healing Arts is a program on complementary and alternative medicine. We look at areas such as homeopathy, herbalism, and acupuncture. Please join me, your host, on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. on Rogers Community TV. Local people express their thoughts, feelings, and dreams through poetry. Catch the millennial wave on Rogers Community Television. In the future, information of all kinds will be yours to command, simplifying your world in ways once only dreamed of. They tell us the future will be wonderful. But who, we ask, will make it practical? Right now, a group of companies you know is working together to build a more practical future. This sign is how you'll know them. We're back and we're talking with uh, Bert Coughlin, but before we do, uh, Ralph, you... Oh, we're, 
for doing a uh, sleight of hand. Hey, what can I say? There you go. That's 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 more appropriate, uh, yes. Ralph, for, for the for the second half. Well, our guest now is Bert Coughlin. Bert's the uh, railroad balladeer that you may have seen on our show uh, last year, and. Uh, Bert's uh, been talked before. He does songs on the railroad. He's written uh, some a number of songs about the railroad. He also has some uh, drawings that he did. And uh, he goes out west every year. I've got a little blurb here, which is a promotional program for the Three Valley Gap, which is in British Columbia between Revelstoke and Salmon Arm on the Trans-Canada Highway. And it's just outside of Tregalaki, which was where the last spike. And you can see here is... Uh, for the, uh, for the railroad, the CPR railway was in 1885, and there's Bert there. Bert, you go out every uh, every summer, yeah, every spend summer. about three uh, three months out there. Uh, we'll explain how this happened. <laughs> we were out uh, at Three Valley Gap, and occasionally I tour guide out at the last week and give them a brief history of how Canada was nailed together with the railway. And so I've been doing some tours there, and this elderly gentleman was. Uh, looking at me and taking pictures, and I went over to talk to him, he says, look at I'd like to take some more pictures of you. I says, okay, so we're taking about 14 or 15 pictures. And then he told me, he says, would you mind having it for the, the cover of this travel brochure? I says, not at all. So it's, uh, it's kind of a neat thing, and I had the other vest on that I had here at your last show, all the badges. This time I got the one with the patches. Oh yeah, badges. Are you, you're, yeah. And, uh, now this one here is a rather interesting badge, or Patch. We were in England two or three years ago doing the BBC, and we were at the station, Carlisle Station, going up to Leeds. And so anybody else says, I'd like to get a patch like that uh, for British Rail. And he said, well, they're privatizing. You won't be able to get one. I said, just a minute. And he was, uh, I think, the head of the station or something. So he called to his mates to come over. And he said, you, come over here. Give me your coat. Got out a knife and cut the patch off. That's this one here. And so I had Newmarket cleaners sew it on for me. So that's kind of a special thing for me, because you won't see them anymore now. It's all privatized. No. And, and uh, you, uh, we can always see you from time to time at the Fine Cakes on the Main Street. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Fine Cakes shop with Edward and Suzanne. And, of course, uh, the coffee, the corner coffee shop. And I hang around great books uh, quite often, because I'm a bookworm, and I get fabulous books. So this is where you winter, more or less. Yeah. And, but <laughs> so you've you've been in <laughs> this is where I winter and relax and uh, <laughs> do a little research. And, practicing or whatever. When you get to be my age, you got to keep the fingers going or you'll lose it, you know? And you and Ralph have done a number of things together, too, in Newmarket, if I oh, understand, yeah. right? We, uh, Ralph and I and uh, Dennis Cooper did the big model train thing there on the Christmas thing, you know, we had the big display there, and Wally had his Model T, <coughs> or his big Cadillac, and uh, it was a fun thing. We haven't done it now for a couple of years, though. Sure, we've, you know? we've had you up to the Historical Society. Yeah, Historical LA Society, and that's right. Out, yeah. out to a picnic we went, yeah. remember? Oh, that was yeah. neat. That's fun. Jackie Prater, she had an old pile of sandwiches, and they put in her eating a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful lady, you know. She's, uh, she, I guess she and uh, Glenn are glad that I'm on a diet now. <laughs> <laughs> well, J J Jackie, uh, uh, Glenn, and her, her husband, actually, or her son, rather, Wes, is very, very active in the Historical Society, That's I think, right. isn't yeah. he? Oh, yeah. He helped yeah, design the uh, little tour walk. Walk. Yeah, well, they're, they're collectors. They collect all of, all the, <laughs> these um, uh, pictures uh, on postcards because they're all postcard collectors, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's why they got so much of those. So, what type of a summer did you have this summer since we saw you last? Uh, out of this uh, smashing success, and uh, they want me back again next year, of course. And a number of things happened that really uh, touched me. The author of the uh, last bike operetta that was aired across Canada, and the author heard about what I was doing, and so we got a hold of uh, Herb and Fran at Beardale Castle Miniature Land, which is at Craigalaki and to give me this book, so it's quite an honor. And it's acted out, and there's music. It's about an hour It's an, hour an operetta. Half, it? It's an operetta, oh yeah. It's an operetta. About Eddie, the huh? last bike? <coughs> yep. And where is this performed? Is well, it? it's not performed now. This is when the last bike to celebrate the 100th anniversary. Uh, for about a year they were doing that. And the, and the, now, uh, the last bike was, was driven in Craigalaki, which yeah. is between yep. Revelstoke and Salmon Sycamus. Arm on yeah. Yeah, Sycamus, yeah. but in 18... Uh, 1885. What, what, do you know the day? Or? It was uh, actually the Saturday. One of the books says Thursday. It was uh, November the 7th, 1885, at exactly 9.22 a.m., because Arthur Pierce, one of the uh, directors of the CPR, 
uh, timed it. He hauled it with his pocket watch, and you know, the railroad watches back in those days were right spot on. They didn't fool around with those, because that meant lives, mm. 500 people on a train. Uh, previously, he drove uh, a spike, but he bent it. So Arthur Pierce picked it up, went to pocket it, and a very observant Donald Smith demanded that he hand it over, where it remained in the Smith family for exactly 100 years until 1985, when the current Lord Strathcona, who is a great grandson of Donald Smith, donated it to the National Museum of Science and Technology after displaying it out in Revelstoke for a book. So in, in the summer, when you go to Three Valley Gap, this is, this is what you do? You, you, you give talks about this, the... Uh, uh, that's just a, a small part of it, you see. And this here is a silver coin donated by one of the waitresses uh, to my program. It's a silver coin. You see the men driving the last bike there. And, and, and course, you, you give tours on this, don't you? And, uh, yeah, well, actually, the odd time uh, people come in when I, when I do tours at Three Valley Gap, John, they say, look, could you take us out to the last bike? And I say, well, if you can wait lunchtime, that's when I'm done. However, my current uh, activities surround this place here. This was given to me by Stan Hubley, a good friend of mine and a bass player. And uh, this is quite valuable because it's very old. And that's Three Valley Gap, and there you can see part of the ghost town where I'm a tour guide. And of course, there's a record inside there, a little bit of literature, and the record in here. And you're a guide there also. And I'm, yeah. I'm a tour guide there, yeah. Yeah, you speak German See, though, don't you? A little bit of German. I'm learning German. Edward and Suzanne are teaching me German. They have the fine cake shop. But it's coming a little bit slower than I thought. Uh, I guess I've got to make an excuse, like age. I'll be 63 in March. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yeah, yeah. Ich bin ein meine Deutsch sind Zähne ring. Ich bin klein, weil Harris Rhein neben der Wohnhaus ist so lang. Which means my uh, usage of the German language is uh, very limited. <laughs> so that's a scoop. Uh, what are some of the other... Here. A Glen Fittick. <laughs> a, good, no. a good malt whiskey. Walker's <laughs> shortbread cookies. They make cakes. Uh, they're sold all over the States in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and England, and Scotland. We uh, did a show for him on his video camera, the guy that owns Walker's shortbread cookies. He's a guy about, be about 50 or 51 now. So he uh, sent us these cakes. But on here is the original Krigaliki that our Krigaliki is named after. And you can see it here. Let me find it for you. This is in Scotland. This is in Scotland, northern Scotland, in the Spey Valley. Northern Scotland. That is Krigaliki, Scotland. This is where the Clan Grant, Clan Grant used to meet when they had their battles and they had their rallying cries and that. And that's the spot right there. Krigaliki, Krigan. Our last bike is named after that by William Cornelius Van Horn, our legendary railroad builder. So that's quite a historical uh, thing to see. This is in the, the see. heart of the uh, yeah. whiskey trail. Yeah, right? the whiskey trail, the whiskey <laughs> Which, which uh, brings us to this bottle. Now this bottle, you... this is given to me by Paul Pace of the flea market, another friend of mine. And the camera may not be able to pick this up, but you'll see the Honorable Donald Smith doing his thing there. Van Horn and Sanford funding with a stovepipe hat. But because of the lighting and everything, you might not be able to bring that up. And this bottle was built, or made, I should say, to or molded, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the last bike in 1915. And on the other side, we have the typical eight-wheeler, which is the type of locomotives they had in those days. They weighed about 60 tons apiece. But they were big in their day, you know. So that's, and over here... And, and we're not sure what was in this bottle. <coughs> no, I uh, took the lid off to see if I could detect the aroma of... Uh, of some kind of liqueur, but uh, I couldn't. It was absolutely dry. And you brought along some some uh, photograph or uh, paintings or uh, drawings, if you will. Yeah, these <coughs> these drawings. I did these about 40 years ago, 42, 43 years ago. This particular one took me 22 hours. Now the problem with doing artwork in those days, using India ink and a fine nib, you can get your drawing nearly done. And then the ink comes out and ruins your drawing. Now, this happened on another drawing that I'm going to show you. You, you, drew, you drew these yourself? I drew these myself, you see. And uh, there's one that I never finished. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll finish it, but it's kind of nice to have an illustration of... Uh... Okay, now the one that I'm going to show you here... <clears throat> now, you'll notice here that that turned out all right. No mistakes. And I got the locomotive done, I got the tracks done, and I said, ah, Burton, that's one of your best drawings. So anyway, uh, I was holding the, the nib, and the ink brought it out and went all over here. See? So I, I, there was nothing drawn in here at the time, so I put bull in there. I ah. know it was bull and rutsa. <laughs> 
But uh, and then these lines here, and I put this guy here. But I was lucky; I managed to save that drawing. Hey, what what, what type of a, of a a locomotive? This is locomotive there? here <coughs> weighs nearly 300 tons. It is what they call the Bear Garrett, built by the Bear Garrett Locomotive Company in England. And my great uncle uh, was uh, the president of uh, Bear Garrett Locomotive Company, uh, Sir Sam Fay. And those locomotives were used in Africa, Russia, England, and I think there's a couple in Scotland. Still? You New mean? Zealand. Uh, yeah, some of them are still running. But the big disadvantage of those, uh, John, is the fact that once your water goes down and your coal goes down, you don't have that much weight for traction on the driving wheels. You, know, you start out with a heavy train, and 60, 70 miles down the road, you're slipping your wheels a bit. So uh, that was a problem that they were considered a success in their day, you know. And, and in British Columbia, where, where you've been, there's a, uh, another uh, historic railroad, the, the Kettle Valley. Yes. It, uh, which is, runs from, um, <coughs> I think, up, uh, up, up the Kettle Valley, from yeah. you know, Rock, Rockford, I think the town is, or Midway down mm, the right at the bottom Summerland, of British Columbia. Uh, yeah. There's different little towns there that I haven't studied the history of. Now, have you been to, uh, on that? To uh, no, but I wrote uh, a song about, uh, two songs about the Kettle Valley Railway. And one of the head guys there heard the song. He came in the Three Valley Gap from the restaurant. And I had my guitar there entertaining the folks doing a little bit of PR. And so this guy's right come over. So my husband, he's uh, one of the founding fathers of this restored Kettle Valley Railway. And that's why I wrote two songs about it. Oh, perhaps we could hear it. So uh, they were enthused about the song. I just did one of them, you know. Yeah. Now, you've done a number, a couple of songs about Young Street, too, which ties in with... Uh, yeah, I should have. You know, brought them along. I thought we were just going to be doing the Diana song, and uh, I guess what we could do if you decide on a second song. I was in a Main Street deli a few years ago. <clears throat> I picked up the Sun paper, and I see this kid slouched over the ice. I'm not, I'm not into skating or hockey or sports. Maybe it's Kurt Browning, a marvelous Canadian. So I read the story, and I was so touched that I got one of the placemats, and in 90 minutes, I believe it was, I wrote a song about Kurt Browning. And I went home and... Uh, sang it and it worked out all right so I picked that one if you might possibly like to hear that one as we coast along my, uh, well the, the there was a rail wasn't there Ralph that ran up uh, Young Street of some kind uh, the, the radio line yeah, yeah radio, radio. That's, that's the one I uh, did on your last show about 10 months ago yeah ten so do, what was that uh, that's, uh, railroad <coughs> York Radio uh, the Toronto and York Radio Toronto yeah Metropolitan is what it's called mm -hmm. and uh, it's in here we did it on the previous show and uh <coughs> it's some antique. But, but when was that? Uh, the, when was that built? That uh, ni 1900. In 1900, and it ran uh, right through Newmarket. Uh, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, it ran till till the 20s, and then it uh, the the automobile kind of knocked it out. Yeah, the Model T, they say, is what. Yeah. But that was uh, that wasn't uh, steam uh, locomotives. No, no, no. 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 Oh, like but they were. Oh, I think uh, West Plater had a picture of a steam locomotive for the construction on that. You know where that archway is? Yeah. And there's a bridge there and a picture of a steam locomotive on there. I stand to be correct, and I'm not sure, but it seemed to me that was a steam locomotive. Yeah, they, well, they used some steam on there to, to start, yeah. but it was all it was all run by electricity. Uh, there was a there was a powerhouse in in uh, Oak Ridges, and there was a powerhouse in Newmarket. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it was electrical. Uh, electrical, yeah. yeah. Overhead wire. And some of the, the banking wires. or the uh, the escarpments <coughs> where they built the uh, were the were the tracks sat for this are still around still there yeah there's still one right at the corner of mulock and young and there's a there's a whole bunch uh north of of new market and you can still see where right the, the yeah. electrical uh, lines or the, yeah. the hydro lines go, go through, across the follow the uh the, yeah, the, uh, the drive old. up to uh to that the road um uh between hall landing and uh and Leslie, and you can see them look uh, down the fields. You can see the yeah, line running across. Take me up there, Ralph, sometime. And we'll oh, check that out. That'd be nice. Yeah, well, I'll we'll show that. you. Now that I'm retired and you're semi-retired. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the uh, uh, where did you start playing anyway? Uh, well, I started uh, playing uh, about 40 years ago, and I wanted to sing like Hank Williams. I was always a Hank Williams fan. Right? Well, he sang a lot of railroad songs. But he didn't. Hank Snow did a lot. But I really didn't get into the railroad songs that much. It was a basic country music, you know. The, Cheating Hearts and the Long Black Veil and all of these songs. Did you play with a group or a, a, a? Yeah, I played with the uh, <coughs> different groups, the County Trail Blazers, uh, and several other groups, uh, just locally. You know, at dances and shows and Barry Television. We did a few shows there. Well, they were all trying. I used to live near Barry Television. Yeah. 
What was it, a, a, a country western band? Is that yeah, it was Art Salsi, and I can't remember what the show was called. It was on one show with Art Salsi, and then another show with Mel Levine. Do you remember Mel Levine? You should remember him. No, I remember Art Salsi, uh, though. Well, Mel Levine, he, uh, he alternated with him, <coughs> and he played a pretty mean violin. I was on that show, and then I was on Art Salsi's radio program once or twice in Richmond Hill. Yeah, he used to be called, I think, Slim, wasn't it, at one time? No, that's his... Uh, that was his brother. Third brother, whose daughter became very successful country and western singer. Sandra Selsey? Oh, yes, yeah. Fantastic singer. And you, you played at the old uh, Farmer's Market. Yeah, the and Farmer's Market, where you in, used to in, be. The, in you know, Thornhill? You know, when did you go, when did your musical uh, ability start? What, uh, well, playing? Yeah. Well, I started playing, I, well, I played there at the old uh, <coughs> Farmer's Market back in the 50s. Yeah with another couple of other guys. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there was, uh, well, at that time, uh, you'd see from time to time, Gordy Lightfoot would come by. Yeah. And I remember Tommy, uh, Tommy Hunter. Yeah, Cliffy Short. Uh, Cliffy Short, yeah, who's still around. Uh, there yeah. was Petrie. Uh, well, I yeah. think Don Selsey was the uh, one was, yeah. that started, started that I thing. saw him two years ago in uh, Arby's. My gosh, he looks different. Of course, I guess we all do. You know, we age, you know. And that's why I cover my brain cage with this hat. <laughs> you know. But uh, they were good days. Now, I didn't see Tommy Hunter uh, there. I think I came in a little bit after that was Russ Townsend. And, uh, Russ Townsend almost got a job at the country. I remember him, Russ Townsend. <clears throat> he was a smooth guitar player. Boy, he was just like dessert, Ralph. Mm -hmm. He could really smooth. Oh, yeah, nice guy. He, uh, he's back in uh, Nova Scotia now, I believe, living. Well, I used, my, did you work with the Hames sisters at all? No, 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 never with them. Uh, there was <coughs> did one they used thing to take with the two of them out. Carlton oh, Show the Band. Hames sisters, you those guys. Yeah, there were a couple. The of Carlton Show Band. Yeah, I did yeah. a couple of stints with them. Terry Hines and there was oh, I can't remember the other guys' names, and that was kind of a uh, unique. Well, I played bass uh, uh, with a country band and, and also a uh, a right? bluegrass band for a while, no, sure. and I remember at one time uh, since I was on the road traveling with a rock and roll group. Uh, yeah, uh, Tommy Hunter was looking, the phone home and asked my mother where I was, and he was looking for a bass player for a fill-in show. Good yeah. Um, well, Tommy was, Hunter had, had the Haim sisters on that. Yeah, we had the radio, he took over the radio show from the Cappy Gang, it was a summer thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, he ended up getting somebody else, and I got back into town, I met him, and he said, I was looking for you. Well, it turned out that that became uh, a permanent fixture, and then uh, he ended up on television. So who knows what would have yeah. happened had yeah, he found me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, that That's right. time. Remember Mike, Mark, and Jack? Yes, well, that was the guy he's got as a bass player. I see one of those guys that come out to Three Valley Gap now and again. They come to visit Sky Floyd Drew, the Canadian cowboy that I work with at the Live Theater out there. And, uh, one of them died, the, 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 the singer, the, uh, the guy, <laughs> played the guitar. He died. I know the, the one guy is still alive, and you talked about another one. But uh, what a nice guy, great big huge fella, and... Uh, He's the bass player that Tommy Hunter got in place of me. I think, yes, at least, I think, yeah. yeah I Red Shea played, Red Shea played there Red, then. Red Shea, yeah. And of course, there's Les Shea, you know, that Les is a uh, member of the Red and Les trio? Yes. Tommy yeah. Hunter sold uh, Les is down in New York City writing songs. This happened to her about 15, 20 years ago. Are, are you going to uh, play one of the... Uh, uh, They're playing there. Oh, now, you, you also wrote something this summer here about uh, Princess Diane. Yeah, I'll tell you the quick story about how we did that. I, I, uh, I, we did our show, and I made myself a cup of tea. I'm going to join you. And uh, so anyway, uh, it'll be the key of E for you. And so anyway, uh, I, I got up as well and watched the news. There's more about the tragic action with... Uh, with Princess Diana, I thought, oh boy, that looks so I grab my guitar and I'm sitting there, and I start playing this melody that I wrote two years ago. And so then the news came on, and for about six weeks after, every time they come news, I started playing this melody, and I decided to use it for uh, a song that I wrote about uh, Diana. I got the words here, and uh, if we could... Uh, <coughs> well, here, I'll, I'll just put it... Oh, is that... Yeah. How many, how many verses are you going to do it's got... Uh, Three. It, it tells the whole story. It's a key of E. Uh, the key of E for you. Right. The key of D for me. <coughs> Diana Spencer was born on the 1st of July in 1961. She was lovely and beautiful, royal and regal. In England, her life had begun. She married Prince Charles at St. Paul's Cathedral, a fairy tale wedding for two. Then she became known as the Princess of Wales, Diana, Great Britain loves you. Diana, Diana, they wrote your name in the stars. Diana, Diana. 
Diana, you're an angel with a queen of all hearts. The princess gave birth to Prince William and Harry, the boys were the love of her life. Then Charles and Diana drifted apart, but the angel of England survived. From Europe to Africa, U.S. and Canada, Diana helped everyone. Caring and giving with all that she had for the charity she had begun. Diana, Diana, they wrote your name in the stars. Diana, Diana, you're an angel a queen of our hearts. A handsome Egyptian came into her life when Diana fell Dodi Bayad. He purchased a ring to slip onto her finger. The princess found to love at last. In Paris, they both left the Ritz on that evening, and the cameras were flashing like fire. But the automobile took her life in the tunnel with Dodi Diana expired. Diana, Diana, they wrote your name in the stars. You this world in 1997, an angel, the queen of our hearts, an angel, the queen of our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done that's something beautiful. like that. You hey, know? that was enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. That shirt for our unique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been many years since we. Uh, well, that that back of the old farmers market. Oh again, yeah, right? a lot of fun there. My <laughs> gosh. Oh yeah. So you're going back again? Uh, so it, 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 do you record any of these things? The middle of April. Can... This one isn't uh, recorded yet. It's each seven to eighteen thousand dollars to put out a single to try and promote a song like that. You can, it's very hard to. Uh, it requires a lot of luck. Yeah. But, and, uh, but you do have a couple of uh, uh, tapes, I think. You did. You uh, do? Yeah, I got uh, my third tape is out, and it's got a picture of me with top hat and tails. Gordon Bell bought all one thousand copies, and we were talking last year, John. We were talking about. What I wanted to do with this, and it's got 15 songs on there, and plus one of the songs that he wanted me to write for him. I'm also hired to write songs about local history at Three Valley Gap and Revelstoke and things but like that. But in in the winter time, when you winter in Newmarket, more or less, do you uh, do you perform around town? Can someone see you? It's uh, uh, work, work? not that much. I sort of because it's a pretty uh, although I love it, it's a labor of love. It is pretty intense. Like we're doing tours in the morning, and then in the afternoon writing songs. Uh, or the someone say, well, look at uh, one of the waiters told me that uh, we'd go to see the last bike. Would you give us a, a blurb or something? Right? Well, what I mean in, in the in the winter here in Newmarket. And in the winter here, I don't uh, just maybe go up to the mall, uh, write songs, improve the grammar and the diction on them, and uh, things like that. And uh, thinking about new songs to do. I'm always planning, making big. Plans. Well, maybe someday you might. Well, we might see you here at the Newmarket Theater. I played here can... about three years ago for Jackie. They had an opera singer that couldn't make it, so I wore top hat and tails and came down here and sang for about half an hour. It was in a room where they had coffee in that. Ah. Uh, I don't think this... No, this building wasn't no. built yet. But this was the, the old one, wherever that was. Yeah. Well, look, uh, you're, you're going to be going back out again, so when before you go, maybe we might get a chance to get you on the show. Sure, great. But I want to thank you, Bert, for well, coming thanks. by. Thanks. And That's thanks very much, time. Ralph, for, for taking the time to come down and tell oh, us about the uh, new it. book. Enjoyed and, working uh, with Bert here. He's a great... <laughs> Ralph, yeah, <laughs> Unbelievable other, uh, guy to, to think that that uh, we we have such a great uh, singer and uh, balladeer in Newmarket. Well, be sure to tune in on, to Tuesdays at 9 p.m. And before we go, we'd like to show you a small video, a quick video of uh, the Endangered Species Band, which we're going to be featuring uh, Rick uh, Stevenson on our show sometime in the future. And by the way, if you're interested, you can see the Endangered Species Band here at the Newmarket Theater on January the 17th. They're going to be here performing. He does soft songs from the 30s and 40s. So don't go away. Uh, let's give a listen, and uh, I'll be seeing you back here sometime next week. Thanks again for watching. I'm John Dowson. <laughs> a trip on a train and I thought about you I strolled down a shadowy lane and I thought about you 
Two or three cars parked under the stars, a winding stream. The moon shining down on some little town, with each beam the same old dream. At every stop that I made, I thought about you. But when I pulled down the shade, then I really felt blue. And I peeked through the crack and looked at the track, the one leading back to you. What could I do? I thought about you. Under these stars, a winding stream, and the moon shining down on some little town, with each beam the same old dream. At every stop that I made, I thought about you. But when I pulled down the shade, then I really felt blue. I peeked through the crack and looked at the track, the one leading back to you. What could I do? I thought about you.